question. I'm yep. opening the meeting. Okay. Actually, the me it wasn't because I need her to share her screen. Okay. Well, I when it's, it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm done. I'm, I won't interrupt anymore. I'm opening the CCI meeting for January 11th at approximately 6.32. And I'm going to welcome Christopher Dunn, our Planning Economic Development Coordinator. It's great that you're here. Yay. So thanks. Yeah, Good it'll, to be be here. Enter it'll be entertaining for you, Christopher. Okay. <laughs> Lily, could you read the, the hoo-ha? Yeah. All right. Well, just in case you were all wondering, certain meetings normally held municipal officers being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill number 58, the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 38, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Zoom link is posted on the agenda. Meetings are recorded and then uploaded to the is it the town YouTube or FCAT? I'm not sure. Anyway, you can find it. YouTube. Say. Yeah. Thank you. Well done as usual, Lily. Okay. All right. Just as a reminder, meeting guidelines speak one at a time. Be recognized by the chair. That means put your hand up or give the little yellow and don't speak out of turn because it drives us nuts. Speak one at a time, Deerfield Code of Conduct. Be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non repetitive. So I'm going to do a roll call. Uh, Jim Cambius. Present. All right. Julie is not here yet. Uh, Lily. Here. Present. Tim Hilchie. Present. All right. Andrea Leapson. Here. I'm here. Trevor not here. Annie Cruz not here. Carolyn will be later. John Pachurk, no. And M.A. Here. All right. And Pete Law. Uh, present. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, let's see. Next order of business is approve the minutes from November 28th and from December 5th. So if you've all had a chance to look at them, are there any corrections, revisions? If not, I'll ask for a vote to accept the, both of those meetings. Andrew, right, so you have I, I was not present at the November 20th meeting, so I need to abstain from that part of the vote. Okay. All right. I, okay. I move I move that we accept the minutes for do you want to do one, them one at a time? Sure. For November twenty-eighth. Um, I move that we accept the minutes for November twenty-eighth. Second. Okay. Show of hands. Second. Okay. And, and Thank you know you. what? My understanding is that we actually do have to do a roll call. We have to say it. Okay. All right. Uh, Lily Dwight. Yes. Okay. Tim Hilchie. Yes. Andrew Leibson. Abstaining. Okay, <laughs> James Cambius. James Cambius, aye. Pete Law. Aye. And M.A.? Aye. And Denise Mason, yes. Okay, now the minutes for December 5th. Lily. Oh, do I hear a motion? I, I move that we accept the minutes. I second that motion. All right. Okay, any revisions, corrections? No. All right, I'll put it to a vote. Um, Lily? Aye. Tim? I don't remember if I was there. <laughs> I think you were, Tim. Uh, aye. Okay. Andrea? Aye. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jim? Aye. Pete? Aye. M.A.? Aye. Denise? Aye. So we are all set. And we welcome Pam Predmore as a guest along with Christopher Dunn. All right, okay, um, let's see. We're gonna go on to committee updates. And just as a reminder, please be succinct in your reports. Try to limit them two to three minutes. Be focused on what you're saying because everyone has a ton of meetings and probably everyone's really tired. So I'm going to start off with Jim. All right. Um... So yes, we just had our first uh, uh, library board meeting of the new year. Um, uh, let's see, we, um, Candace, you know, gave us our, her director's report that um, they were meeting with uh, uh, Siderly Movers for a, uh, to, for a walkthrough and an estimate. Um, I believe that had been postponed because of um, like bad weather or something. Um, anyway, um, the, Big question is whether is still whether the temporary 
headquarters will be able to store the collection. Um, that's to be determined, although I think it's you probably, Denise, know probably more about that than I do since you're on the building committee. Yeah. <clears throat> um, um, I mean, I could respond to that. And I, th I think w we weren't really sure whether the stage would actually hold all of that. So I did ask Tim, who was unable to, to be there that night. And Tim's going to, Tim, do you want to respond to that? Um, I'm that. meeting with Phil from Robert and Johnson or Johnson Roberts, whatever yeah. the, the architecture firm is on Tuesday after I vote. Um, yes. Um, and we're going to look at the space. He's going to do some more measurements. He's going to look under the stage and we're going to take him into the basement to see the support structures. So yeah. hopefully being an architect, he will be able to provide an opinion about the load bearing capabilities. I feel like, you know, that part of the building is newer than the original sanctuary. Yeah. So it's, it seems likely to me that it'll be able to support some boxes of books. Our collection well, helps, but big. books being heavy. Yeah, right, right. We don't have that big a collection. I mean, I'm, I seriously True. think I have more here in my house than the Tilton does. Um, the other thing, if they have to be stored elsewhere, I thought Dan Pallotta, the OPM, said something to, to the tune of $800 a month. So, you know, that's a big right. expense. So, that, that at any rate, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll have more updates. That certainly, yeah. would be two estimates, depending on whether they just have to move them across the parking lot or whether they will need to be stored. Yep. Um, so um, we are um, um, slightly shifting our um, um, fundraising strategy. Our uh, fundraising consultant will go on a hired as needed basis rather than a retainer, um, um, just for efficiency, you know, uh, cost efficiency. Um, and uh, let's see, the, uh, Candace is working on getting the Wi-Fi switched over to the new location. Um, there's apparently some incomprehensible complication with the CW Mars connector. So it looks like Comcast will have to just set us up a new one in the new place. Why, I do not know. Um, let's see. Um, uh, the annual appeal is doing well, but um, um, I think everyone agrees that that's probably due to people donating to that instead of the building fund by mistake, because I did. Um, let's see. Um, uh, uh, Candace has gotten the provisional budget request, a, firm, a first draft of that ready anyway, and it's level funding, you know, but... Um, it's an awful lot of guesswork because we have no idea what a lot of the expense levels associated with the with the new quarters will be, right? We don't know whether it will use more fuel or less to heat it, more electricity or less, uh, et cetera. So a lot of the numbers are pure guesswork. Hope for the best. Uh, Tim, you've got a question? Yeah, I wondered if um, you know the answer to this, Jim, whether the money that might be being given to the annual appeal can be diverted to the... Uh... I think the Tilton Fund could make a contribution, yes. If we have a Good. bumper crop of donations, I think the Tilton Fund could do that. I mean, the Tilton Fund board could vote to do it after all. And since they're the same people as the library board, I don't think it would be much of a hard sell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but... Um... And the Any, other good news is... Else? Oh. Yeah, the other good news is that while um, while the building's being built, you won't be heating it, and you won't be, but you will be heating the the, uh, right. the church we'll building. The new place. I don't know whether it'll be more or less. Nobody does until we do it. Um, we did have the good news. I think I said this last time that because we're going to be ripping open one half of the one whole side of the the existing building in the coming year, the building inspector said no, it doesn't need an inspection. So, okay. but that's uh, that's about it from the library. Okay, great. Thanks. Does anybody have any questions for Jim? We're all set. Okay, good. Thanks, Jim. All right, I'm going to move on to Pete Law. 
Oh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Conservation Commission, yeah, well, it simply just won't stop raining out there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just continue to work on a lot of emergency response certificates and, and the, the uh, projects. The uh, uh, walking road we finished off. We got uh, a lot of road control put in place. Uh, same as Luzic Road, uh, road control is in place. Um, there was also some erosion control uh, installed at North Main Street on Old Deerfield on the south side, um, where we did some clean out there. Um, there was also another <clears throat> emergency response certificate for across from Bittersweet um, in that um, nice little wetland area there for clearance of some sediment in the water flow area. A lot of there, we got that done. Um, so that has been cleared out again this fall. Um, some of the other projects uh, besides emergency response, there's been some cleat, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> some tree clearing happening at the Sunny Days project on uh, Greenfield Road, and a little bit of a uh, road control has been put in place, and I think they're going to be kind of, uh, you know, sitting down for the winter <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, before they do much more in there, but they did start this fall there. Uh, there's several other projects that we've closed out uh, in the last month and upcoming it's continues to be busy. We have a, a new NOI for the Deerfield Academy Dining Hall. Um, we should be getting the plans in from the Cumberland Farms uh, Extension Fund um, upkeep um, on our meeting, which is the next meeting is on the 25th at 6 p.m. Um, there's another, well, there's probably four or five other RDAs or NOIs that's on the agenda already that have come in. Um, I'm working with Chief and Kevin on looking at River Road. Um, we may have to do an emergency response there because in that area where we're looking at, there are some uh, resource areas that need to be protected there. Um, so that it continues um, one thing after another. Um, the other kind of fun news, good news, is that with the, um, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, MVP group for climate resiliency, uh, we met last night, but we um, have scheduled a farmers for, forum for the 25th uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 to noon, and we'll be going. We have uh, Mark Stinson in from the DEP, who is the Western Mass Circuit Rider, to talk about how the uh, Wetlands Protection Act affects agricultural use and so forth, and a very a number of other um, issues from that we work with Carolyn on for that. So, um, hopefully, we'll get uh, you know some good uh, good attendance and good response to that meeting because there's going to be a lot of great information that we're putting together there for the twenty fifth. Really? I think that's it, Denise. Yeah, that that's a lot, Pete. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot. I have a question, Pete. Um, I have a question about um, how are you reaching out to all the farmers? Because it's always a question about how we let people know about things. I'm curious what methods you're using, if there's anything you can enlighten us with. Yeah, there's several things that we came up with last night. And um, Henry. Um, oh, Melnick. 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 Thank you. <laughs> it's right there. I was going to say that. Um, he's kind of representing uh, the farmer um, group on the MVP committee, and he's been reaching out to the farmers that he knows. But we also came up with some ideas last night to put some flyers together. There'll be a there should be a flyer uh, posted on the Duke website currently, um, but we're going to put flyers into areas like Tesla, Spitter Suites, um, uh, BBA, different places where you know um, people go and hopefully see it. And reach out to the um, oh there it is right there there's a the flyer um, the Greenfield uh, the uh, farmers co-op up on High Street in Greenfield so there's a number of different areas that we try to push out with over the next couple of weeks but whatever you guys can do to help us get the word out would be be wonderful thank you yeah and Pete I think also it's going to be um, televised so if farmers can't make it they could still receive some help. Um, you, you know, in terms of grant uh, writing proposals. Right. So I think we yeah. talked about that too, which will be great. So yeah, Thanks, it Pete. looks like a good thing. Good. Thank you. I know yep. you've been busy. 
good grief. Okay. Uh, let's see, who's next? How about um, Andrea? Sure. Um, even though I'm not supposed to repeat um, myself, um, I'm going to say again that the Open Space and Recreation Committee is working on a grant proposal to um, that we're going to submit to the um, Community Preservation Committee. Um, and we are, it is all about permanently protecting four pieces of property that are already owned by the town. Yesterday, the uh, some representatives from Open Space met with uh, the select board and they seem to be in support of it. Uh, we also have letters of support from the Energy Committee, thank you, MA, and from CONSCOM, thank you, Pete. Um, and uh, the, we will be submitting that for um, before March 1st. The um, one issue I should tell you about is that the the proposal is to have the Franklin Land Trust hold the conservation restriction because the town can't hold it itself. And the Franklin Land Trust is very interested. They're gonna be contributing money toward that. However, they wanna do a walkthrough on a couple of the, at least one or two pieces of the property because they're concerned about the uses of the property that are not really, that are just kind of out there. There are mountain bikers building ramps and doing things, which is one of the strong reasons we need to protect this. People are using the land in ways that may not be appropriate. And um, so if the Franklin Land Trust uh, deems it mm, dicey for them, then we, um, then they won't want to hold the conservation restrictions. However, we have a plan B in mind for another land trust, which we might call upon if that's if that happens. So we are inching our way closer and closer to, to doing this. Well, wow. so Andrea, I've got a couple of questions. The first one is if um, if there are, you know, things that are done on that property that shouldn't, who's who's actually, I mean, whose jurisdiction is that? What right can now, we do? right yeah. now, it's the towns. However, okay. the town is not um, is not monitoring the land. Right. Um, when, if, if, when the Franklin Land Trust holds the conservation restriction, they will be um, uh, monitoring the land. I don't know, not necessarily, you know, uh, uh, frequently, but it definitely at least at least once a year. And the conservation restriction will have conditions in it, and so it will talk about uh, how the land can be used, who can use the land. And if there, uh, if we discover that there are lots of mountain biking, for example, for example, um, things going on already, then we will probably be in touch with the mountain biking groups because there are, in fact, some associations uh, to talk about how we properly steward this land um, mm -hmm. because there's concerns about, um, you know, animals, plants, et cetera, that are uh, of issue. Lily, okay. do you want to? Did I answer your question, Denise? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Denise, Denise has Lily? more questions. Denise has more questions. I can wait. Oh. No, no, it was it was just a simple one. Didn't you say at the planning board meeting that um, once it is permanently restricted, it opens us up to the ability to apply for different grants? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Go ahead, Lily. So my question was, um, are, has the town posted anything on that land at the moment? Not that I'm aware of. One of the pieces of land is right next to my house. No, um, <laughs> or yeah, down the road from my house. No. Would it make sense for the committee to do a, you know, at least an initial posting about um, what's which? So, so when you say co the committee, you're talking about the open space committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when you say posting, are you talking about like no hunting or what kind well, of posting? whatever? Whatever, I mean, maybe it is being used for hunting now and maybe that is a legitimate use, but um, but it, is it posted at all? Because there's gonna be liability, right? Around things that um, if they are not addressed. I would imagine so, so I have to say right now, uh, some of this land was donated um, to the town in the twenties. Uh, the latest piece was donated in the 70s. 
So not, not much has been done, period, in all that time. Um, so I guess it's, you know, it is an issue with the whole liability thing in such a litigious uh, right. phase of our country at, the, at this point. Um, right. Those are those are issues, but um, I I don't know. One of the um, one of the pieces of the budget is for um, attorneys to review uh, things. So um, I assume that when it's when when we get to that point, the attorneys will say something about uh, how things have to be posted or whatever. But it's been we've owned this land for nearly 100 years. Um, at least uh, several of the properties, th three of the four. So, you know, we're just <laughs> trying to formalize and and permanently, permanently protect. OK, so, Andrea, I'm not going to go through this now, but we can talk offline. I know some people who do mountain biking there and it's not my husband, <laughs> but I do know. Okay. Yeah. So right. I can I can tell you who to get in touch right. with. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. 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 Thank Thanks. You. Well, that, that's helpful, Andrea. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how about M.A.? Sure. Um, uh, Energy Committee. We um, have been. We've received the report from the two, um, <clears throat> the three buildings that we had Matt, uh, Eversource do the edit, audits on. Uh, and we are trying to arrange with Eversource a meeting with uh, Darius and Bill Hildreth um, about those buildings and what the priorities will be. We have pretty much decided that our Green Communities Grant, which is due in March, I mean, which, yeah, is due in March, um, will be for uh, building management systems for elementary school and for Frontier. Um, and so, you know, that's moving forward, hopefully. And, uh, Allison Gage is going, from FERCOG is helping us with that. Um, mm -hmm. Second of all, uh, if I might take a little teeny bit more than uh, two minutes. Um, I'll give you three, three minutes. Three minutes. I wanted to just quickly talk about the, uh, the climate leadership communities. Um, I've posted both the description of it on the, on the energy resource uh, CEI, whatever it's called, um, website, and um, and also a description of the specialized stretch code adoption, which I think is probably the most contentious of the things. We also, but I, if if I can just quickly go through, the climate leadership community is a program that it's being called Green Communities 2.0. Um, it is focused much more on fossil fuel reduction than it is and and um, than than the old one one which is energy savings um, uh, and uh, as a result the, the what if when, once you qualify as a climate leader community and there are several things you have to do which I'll quickly go over but you you qualify for studying, designing, constructing, and implementing energy efficient activities, including but not limited to energy efficient me measures and projects, procuring energy management services, adopting energy efficiency policies, citing activities to and construction of renewable generating facilities on municipal owned property. So that would be um, both solar and um, geothermal. Um, and what we need to do is we have to be- Renee, able... I'm sorry to interrupt, but as the note taker, um, I don't understand, you started to say once qualified as a community, and then you listed what the qualification processes were. I don't understand, or, or what sorry. once we qualify as a community, what is the- I'm trying to go quickly, I'm, I'm going, uh, 
anyhow, though, once we've qualified, and I'm about to go through what the qualification requirements are, those are what those are the benefits that we will get from it once we are qualified. And um, so we have to be a green community in good standing, have a local body like the Energy Committee, um, commit to eliminating on-site fossil fuel use by 2050, municipal buildings and operations, create a municipal decarbonization roadmap. And that, uh, uh, Alison Gage said, she's pretty sure she can get a technical assistance grant to help us with. Um, that's complicated, but it's, I mean, it is what it is. I don't think it's controversial. Um, adopt a zero emission vehicle first policy. Um, I'm not, you know, I think you, I think that's sort of iffy because your dump trucks aren't going to be zero emission for a while. So it's just, a, I think it's primarily a commitment to do that when it's viable. And then adopt the specialized opt-in building code, which is based is based on new construction um, being net zero. And um, it's something that we're going to have to do eventually, fairly soon, anyhow. And um, it's new construction. And I know a lot of people say, well, you know, how are people going to afford to build new houses? Well, it's the kind of thing where anybody who can afford to build a new house and gets a loan to do that can will be able to, yes, maybe put solar on their move, you know, have it be all electric, all of those kinds of things. But it saves them more money than it costs them over a period of time. So uh, and I think that that's a decision that should be relatively easy to make. That's my spiel on that. We'll see you later, folks. So, Emma, you know, it would be really nice because that was a lot of inf lot of information, really good information. Could you please post that on our CCI it website? I did. It's, oh, it's, you did. It's, it's not. It's on the energy resource. It's in the committee. My it committee report. I put it up there just a few minutes ago. Excellent. Oh, great. Thank you. Including, oh, including the specialized stretch code information, mm -hmm. what's necessary for that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Perfect. All right. I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> is it under resources Reminded. or is it, is it under resources or is it under um, committee reports? It's under energy resource committee reports. Okay. Thank you. Good. Because okay, I want good. to put a link in our minutes. And you might want to move it someplace if you'd like. Someplace else. I'm fine with that. I mean, if you'd like it someplace else. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see. So next, Tim. Can I say one other thing? Um, sure. We will be actually, I'll let people know when um, Chris Mason, who's the DOER rep, is going to be coming to the select board meeting to do a presentation on the climate, uh, community, climate communities leadership. Oh, good. Good. That would be great. Thank you. Yep. So, Tim, what's going on in your neck of the woods? <laughs> So we finished the uh, road damage info session and my last job was spending a week writing the presentation and getting it uh, in shape. And you uh, did a fabulous, fabulous job. So thank that you. Went pretty well, you know, chief's um, assistant, uh, the, the administrator in the police department and I worked on it quite a bit and I got some help from Chris Nolan to make sure everything got posted properly and, um, bothered Christopher Dunn by being in the office constantly. So um, then we are hopefully gonna hear, beginning in January, the um, <clears throat> heat grant that we applied for for a test well. Um, heat is gonna beginning uh, announcing who's gonna receive grants this month. And probably by the end of February, we'll know whether we're gonna get one. And if so, for how much. That would be for like a 500 foot deep test well with all of the uh, piping to determine what the uh, geological and heat sink capacities of the site are, at least in one place. It would be drilled somewhere near one of the buildings we're working on. And um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, 
the uh, library, temporary library project is moving ahead, um, which Eagle Brook is taking care of. They've finished the ramp on the back. They've put a new stairwell on the front of the building. Um, <clears throat> they've repainted pretty much everything. Um, they're working on installing um, fire, uh, fire notification con connections. Um, they did some additional work in where the kitchen is, put in a new roof and all of the, the refrigerator and the stove that were there have been moved out. So it's looking like a place you could quickly put a new kitchen in. Um, I've been exploring with Casey uh, the possibility of using a $100,000 grant that Joe Comerford arranged for us to go ahead and just finish the kitchen um, because at some point it will need to be done. Um, Casey is resisting because she thinks that this money was for the so uh, South County Senior Center. No, I'm it wasn't. To convince her that it isn't. She insists that it is. Oh. Oh. And I insist that there's no guarantee that Sunderland will pay $2 million to buy a building, take it off the tax rolls, renovate it, when we are essentially renovating the space that we're going to move the library into for zero town dollars, um, doesn't make fiscal sense at that point. Um, so hopefully we'll can come to a meeting of the minds and uh, the, the, the Comerford grant has to be spent by, I believe, June. Um, so I certainly want to use the money. Uh, Andrea, do you have your hand up? I did. I want. I was wondering what you meant by finishing a kitchen, um, as in getting appliances. Okay. Yes. So, so getting I, in my capacity uh, with the um, community meals, I worked a lot with a couple of um, uh, uh, appliance places that are for um, that are industrial. So Production. I can I can talk to you about a couple of places that would be good. Um, for going to. Sure, so I mean, obviously we would be under procurement stuff and everything, but right. knowing where to buy and where to approach, that would be great. And okay. I, I had thought about just reaching out to New England Meeting House just as a, you know, hey, we've got this sort of rectangular space, you know, would you donate design, you know, um, services for, recognition of how wonderful you are. Um, Jim. So I just wanted to clarify, I, I sent you an email asking about, so what's the deal with the Sunderland building? Um, how, okay, how likely is that? Was that essentially uh, a wish list item from the senior center or is it Somebody in somebody in Sunderland's town government is actually working toward this, or no. does anyone know? I mean, is this vaporware or something that could happen, or what? Um, well, there are various various thoughts on that, depending on who you ask. And um, my take on it is that the hundred thousand dollar grant from Joe Comerford is going to disappear before Sunderland can get around to actually taking this thing to town meeting, getting authorization to spend $2 million, um, explaining to the citizens that this two plus million dollar building will no longer be on the tax rolls. And you know, so I just don't see how they can get it done before this $100,000 grant needs to disappear. So we need to get the town administrator to start thinking about the need to spend this money. And we will yeah. see how successful we are. Um, you know, I have my own opinion about it and hopefully, yeah. you know, we'll all come to an agreement within the next month. Okay. Denise, did you? Yeah, I do. I've got something before and then you guys can open up your select board meeting since Carolyn's here. Tim, I agree with you. And when Joe gave us that money, it was for that building, which is the uh, community center, senior services. So I will back you up and go in with you and argue with Casey on that. Well, what, I, what I need is um, some written words from Joe that say this, because 
then then let's ask her because yeah. that that was the intent yeah i wonder okay. if you would mind reaching out as head of cci and asking her what was the intent of this grant for sure. yep. yeah uh, I will do that. because sometimes well, people just want to want to be right about something and, yeah well you know and I could be wrong about it. I'm perfectly willing to admit I could be wrong about um, it. No, yeah. I, I agree with Tim. I'll open the Selectman board meeting so you won't have any illegal deliberations, but I Thank agree you. with Tim. I'm sorry I okay. um, had another meeting earlier. Okay. All right. And, um, I th Go ahead, uh, Jim. Yeah, no, this is just a point connected with what you just said. It doesn't really matter what the intent is. It's what was the legislative language that was approved. Exactly. That's what that's what I need to understand um, because the money is still held at the state level as far as I know. And um, do you know, Christopher? Well, yeah. So I was just going to say, so I met with uh, Elena, um, Joe's aide the other day, um, and I did end up forwarding her something on the amendment. Um, so I do have it handy if you want me to pull it up real quick. Um, do you want to share I can, it? Yeah, you can I share can, it on the screen. Yeah, let me see if I'm if I'm allowed. I have see. given permission. Oh, uh, you have. Thank you. All right. Can everyone see that? Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It says regional senior center located in the town of Deerfield. Um. So. <laughs> Seems pretty clear. Yeah. And it's it's to be expended to the town of Deerfield, which of course we've already received the money at this point, I believe. So uh, yeah, that's the language. Okay. Well, um, I think I'll need to reach out to Joe then. I think, no, absolutely I think not. That, that does it. Okay. No more arguing on that one. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll work through it. The other yeah. thing is, can I screen share too? Everybody has power. All right. So <laughs> this this is part Lily. of this is part of my donation to the library. So we're going to figure out how much. This is going to be ten bottles from two thousand two to two thousand eleven. Tickets are going to be fifty dollars or something like that. We're going to sell a thousand of them if we can, and um, for fifty bucks you can get four thousand dollars worth of trophy wine. Anyway. Um, so I don't know if any of you out there are drinkers, but uh, uh, yes, and Schaefer, uh -huh. you know it very well. So yeah. Hillside Select, their premium crew. Whoa. So, well, uh, I think I'd like a sample prior to spending a dollars <laughs> Can we have a party? Yeah, right. Okay. Great idea. After okay. we get fifty thousand dollars for it, we'll all have a party. Okay. Yeah, right. Um okay. And I think. That's it for me. Okay. I may jump in on Carolyn because I'm sure she's got more than right. I do. Did you Thanks, report? Tim. Did you report the MVP? Um, I think uh, Pete Pete did report on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, so I, I think we're. To... Yeah. Yeah. I think I, that's uh, it. I mentioned the farmers forum, uh, Carolyn. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I, I, we really need to get that out there for anybody yeah. that's a landowner or, or a farmer, um, January 25th. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and as far as the other MVP, well, Pete, Carolyn, Tim and I are on that committee now and MA. So it's like one big happy family, but um, it's 2.0. And in order for us to have the ability to get $50,000 to work on a project, we have to jump through a number of hoops and watch and have discussions and do all sorts of things. So it is a such a fun process. Mm. Don't you agree, Tim? Absolutely. And I get to lead Kumbaya the next meeting. So yeah, I know that's great. Uh, anyway, so no, I think it's it'll it'll be good. So another feather in our cap. It's a small um, I just, sacrifice for fifty thousand. It yes, is. and and yeah. to keep our reputation as the number one community, number one certified first, number two in MVP, first in the in the state for the so Healthy Soils Plan, and now we'll be MVP two 
point oh. I just say show us the money, Carolyn. I don't care. No, but one. that's part of our story. We build our story. Okay. Poor Christopher okay. is probably going to be so right. sick of well, us. As long, having as long as story, be, but pay for that story. Okay, I've got a few. Oh, okay, I've got a few things to share, and then we can. I do have prep for MMA conference, but before that, just wanted don't to forget. Don't forget me. Oh my God, Lily. Okay, I always go last. Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> I have many, 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 many things to do because I wear a few hats in town. I'm going to begin with um, a lecture under the will of Oliver Smith, which I know you all care so deeply about. Um, but I do just want to put it out there and remind everybody, I'll probably do a post on Deerfield now after the special election, that Smith Charities donates money um, to students who undertake trades to nursing students and um, under our, um, since since I've been elected, we've raised that money from like, it was $200 to over a thousand now. We also um, give money to widows for their children. I'm also working on trying to give it to widowers. So there's been some changes, but the other thing that we do is we get the money to give away by um, mortgaging people, giving people mortgages, giving isn't exactly true, lending people mortgages. Um, and all the interest from a mortgage that you get through Smith Charities, that interest is what's used to pay the donations. Anyway, so if you know anybody, or you know a kid in um, high school who wants to go into a trade or anything like that, please send them to me or send them to the Facebook page for the elector under the will of Oliver Smith at Deerfield. All right. Uh, Community Preservation Committee. Um, Kathy Sylvester is now the chair and uh, we have implemented the new application and it is posted online. My understanding is not interactive. And so I'm gonna see about trying to find an Adobe account. Maybe the town has one where I can convert it to be an inter um, a fillable form of the PDF. Um, the other thing that we discuss, I mean, all of this is in my uh, committee reports, but um, we have revised the application to address the process for late submittals. Uh, we are holding a public meeting on January 31st. It's gonna be hybrid at town hall because we've all become very educated and we are supposed to be operating with a community preservation plan. The committee believes this plan should be directed by community input, not just by the people on the committee. So this is part of what we're trying to do is reach out to the public. Um, the other thing that we were urged to do was to change our submission deadline to be much earlier than it is now. And so the committee voted to change it to be November 1st of 2024 for the next cycle. We're leaving it alone for this cycle, but for the next cycle. Um, part of that is in anticipation of the fact that we are going to start having competing needs. The other thing we learned is um, I was raised in this committee that it's not our job to make recommendations to the town, but to ensure that the applications are appropriate uses of CPA money. However, we have been told that no, it is actually our job to make recommendations based on the community preservation plan. So especially when there's going to be competing interests, so say we have a pot of money and we've got this building going for some and open space going for some of that pot, we are, we need to have a plan so that we can make these decisions. Um, and so the other thing we're going to do is begin the review of our applications. My current concerns, not mine, but the concerns of the CPC are that we need to enhance the public awareness of the Community Preservation Committee and that we have the possible need to balance competing requests for this cycle. All right, changing hats again, senior housing. <laughs> um, boy, howdy, ain't we got fun. Um, we are going to be visiting the buildings with the architect, uh, with Berkshire Design, and hoping to get an engineer to come and look at both the, uh, I think it's called a rectory, and the church itself 
to get an assessment of um, what it's going to take to in either incorporate them in the design or if it's excessively expensive. One of the things that I have learned is that we are now required to meet stretch energy codes, whereas a year or two ago, it was optional for historic restoration. We are now required to meet them, and that will certainly add to the cost if we're doing that. Um, <clears throat> the NRAD. Ba -da 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 -da. Thank you, Pete. Um, I don't know if everybody signed it, though, have they? Has it been submitted in all that stuff officially? I, I thought it was signed off by the commission, but I would have to double check to be sure. We have I, I would appreciate that. Through, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't, it seems to go through Berkshire design and I don't necessarily know what's going yeah, on. Yeah. I didn't uh, know if you would know off the top of your head. I know there was a bunch of them that get signed off on the last few weeks. So I'll check on that and let you know Thank for you. sure. Yeah. Thank you. DCI at work. Um, we yeah. have done work on um, the request for proposals. Very exciting. Mostly this is very early days. We're walking through Sunderland's RFP and taking our lessons from that. And along the way, <laughs> we noticed that Sunderland relied upon their housing production plan as part of their um, getting their arms around what they needed to do. So we are going to start looking at our housing production plan, which Christopher, just so you know, is uh, 11 years old now. So um, it's going to be interesting. It may, I, I don't know anything about it, but we are going to be looking at that and we'll be doing that next Thursday at seven o'clock. If you want to join us, Christopher, or you can just wait and here we'll send you a summary of our concerns. <laughs> no, I, I'd be happy to join. And I can say that uh, Jessica Atwood from FERCA clued me into the fact that it is out of date. And so <laughs> they stand ready to help us with updating it. Awesome. I, I just want to make sure that we don't build an RFP on something that should that we shouldn't build it on. Right. So um, anyway, I, I don't even know what a housing production plan actually says right now. So we're going to get educated. So that's what we're working on these days. So coming up, we're getting the site visit with um, with the Berkshire Design Group, the architect and the engineer working the RFP. The other thing that we are starting to work on is we're going to schedule a tea with the neighbors. And um, it might be a good idea, Jim, to also include um, library representatives because there seems to be a lot of conflating the concerns around senior housing with the library as well. Um, so we, we have to figure out when we're going to do that probably sometime in <clears throat> February or so. Anyway, so that, that is Elector under the Will of Oliver Smith, Community Preservation wow. Committee, and Senior Housing. Wow. I was just going to say one thing and then, Tim, I was, you are a brave woman, Lily, to you with the neighbors. But Tim, you've got a comment? Um, well, I've got two. I've actually, okay. because of Lily, I've remembered two things. Um, one is that the 1888 building application is largely complete. Um, we're waiting for, Julie and I were supposedly working on it, but she's so busy at MIT that um, uh, it may, may be moved along. Um, of course, it's to, again, legally, there may be two flavors. One is the full boat. Um, if we get a $4 million grant from Warren and Markey, there may be an $8 million, um, which would be a little harder to pull together uh, using CPC funds and CPC bonding, um, which would get us to two, three quarters of the way to complete building. I mean, it would be a fully functional building. It just wouldn't have a third floor. And then there's the Weston and Sampson peer review for um, a comparison of two plans for the old Deerfield wastewater treatment facility that just arrived during this meeting. Um, we have to review it. The select board has to review it. And then we'll have a meeting about it, a public meeting about it so that Deerfield Academy can come. But it looks as though the, the preferred plan, a standard, um, a standard uh, traditional style uh, <clears throat> sewer treatment plant actually is less, less 
expensive to build and operate over the life of the plant than what the DA was, DA's engineer was proposing. Um, I won't say any more about that. And that's it. Great. Thanks, Tim. All right. Wow. A lot of good information and lately. Wow. I have, a, I have one quick question to Tim about this old deer field. Um, it's my understanding, and I could be wrong, that um, DA is planning on adding um, living uh, facilities of some sort. I don't know if they're dorms or houses or whatever. Is the um, proposed sewage treatment plant uh, accommodating um, some percentage of growth? Um, <clears throat> well, we have um, insisted that whatever plant gets built, it has to reach and be able to process 250,000 gallons per day as a minimum. Um, that's what the plant is currently permitted for. Um, some of the plans the DA were, was proposing were for a phased approach of building 75K per day, then adding another 75K, and then, um, and none of those plans were acceptable. So we asked the peer reviewer to do just, you know, because you know how to build these things, project what a 25, a thousand uh, gallon per day plant would be in this MBR process, which is um, <clears throat> much more uh, intensive. So one of the reasons we insisted on that size is because <clears throat> we know the DA is gonna grow. And so they haven't actually included that sort of information in their plan, but that's why we we insist that it meet the current the current capabilities. Plus, plus, I just want to mention that because of our capacity, even though we have these tremendous rainstorm events, we have not dumped any raw sewage into the Deerfield River. Unlike Greenfield. And Unlike Turner. Greenfield and Montague and Greenfield. Both are we get notifications like Almost Weekly, every week. daily, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes two or three times a day. It's it's really, I mean, I'm really proud of us as a town for making sure that we don't do that. And um, so we're not going to re reduce our permit. It doesn't matter. We're just not doing it. it. Doesn't make sense. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, let's see. I just have a few things to report before we go on to a discussion prep for the MMA conference, which is on the agenda. So Shared Streets and Spaces is a grant that we got, oh boy, almost two years ago. And Christopher was on on a um, Zoom today with Casey and uh, two, uh, two people from the FERCOG. And Originally, we wanted to put beacons and crosswalks in front of Frontier and also in the park. The park isn't happening. I probably have reported this before, but we were trying to, you know, think how about putting beacons in front of um, Conway Street. But since we've got so much uh, pavement in, Deer in South Deerfield, it's really difficult to do. So that's, you know, that's another story. That's another whole project on working on that. So I, I'm not sure what's happening with that. So we're sort of going back and forth. We're gonna get an engineer and, and talk about a few different possibilities of other things, but that grant runs out at the end of 2024. So we will get that done finally. And Christopher is here to help us get that done. <laughs> so. So that's happening. Um, finally, the community one stop that we applied for that we did not get that we were very upset about and found out from Ann Gobi that she said, I think she's now going to be, I don't know, part of part of that. And I, I don't know in one, some shape or form, but I ran into her at a, a conference at GCC and she said, well, you know, none of the municipal municipalities got that for buildings and I just said well why did we apply if we knew if we couldn't get it so at any rate we are finally going to have a debrief on that I think on the 16th Christopher I think we've got a debrief with um community one-stop people so that that was sort of irritating I uh, did want to tell you that we do have a new planning board member Satu Zoller so we're pretty excited about that and um, 
And I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Tim and I worked on an MMA innovation award and we applied for that uh, CC, CCI and everything that CCI has done and accomplished over the course of the past two years. I haven't heard anything. I don't know whether that means we haven't gotten it or whether it would be announced at the um, MMA conference. But that's about it for me. And before I move on to that, I do want to remind everyone, please remind your committee members, your friends to go out and vote on the 16th. Please, please, please. I know I'll be calling on all my neighbors. All right. So I just want to move on to prep for the MMA. Uh, Carolyn? Oh, I just want to go back to the community one stop. I just want to make a comment. It was my observation that um, the awards in the community one stop went for road repairs and it was damaged from 2021, July of 2021 storms that the state made no or had inadequate response to, um, you know, reimbursing the town. So it was, you know, it was all the little small towns that had damage. And I, I'm just wondering if that community one stop, it really does not work for our favor. So when you talk to Ann Gobi, you know, it, it's whatever the state wants. It seems like it's whatever the state wants to focus in on that year and it shifts. And, it, and because, you know, your mass works, all your yeah. grants are in there. It's really, it's not, it's not helpful to us. No, it's not. And it's a waste of time because we actually had to hire someone, a grant writer. I spent hours of my time. Casey spent hours of her time. I mean, my time is free. But, you know, so I, I found that really irritating. And uh, Anne said she wasn't even sure whether they were going to award money in this coming year. So it may not even be worth it to to apply for that. I don't know. That's that's another conversation to have later. But. Okay, so Jim, on to the Jim, Jim has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Yeah, that's uh, whatever happens. We need to get Ann Gobi to tell us what the secret handshake is, so yes. we can figure out what should we apply for. Yeah, yeah, so, right. It makes no sense to apply for sidewalks if they're giving money for windows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Okay, that, that's another mission. She's a pretty straight shooter. She's a pretty straight shooter. Yeah. I've worked with her for over 10 years yeah. with the she conservation is. districts. And, and oh, yeah, she's, she's going to be a great ally. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's she's from, yeah just a quick question because I actually haven't seen yet. Did did we submit an expression of interest before we applied or did we? We did. We did, okay, yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you, I mean, yeah, it was. It, it'll be interesting to see because... Um, I'm not sure where Shay is from. Anyway, I think you're going to be on that that debrief session, aren't you, Christopher, with me and Casey? Yeah, I'll plan on it. Oh. Yep. Okay, good, good. I guess we'll we'll find out then. So and we've done this two years in a row. We've been expression of interest, full application, and then found out that the money was given to some other some other, you know, category of things. Well, yeah. the first. The first year was because we did it for the 1888 building and they deemed that um, it wasn't it wasn't as beneficial to the community. So we thought, hey, the 1821 building will be great because that's for a senior and community center. <laughs> so how much better can you get get than that? I mean, it was it was I thought it was really well done. But anyway. OK, so prep MMA conference, Carolyn, Tim. Well, the most important thing, uh, I mean, there's two things that we do that sell, solve money. We connect with um, Department of Revenue and we make our case that the 01342 community zip code does not reflect as the 14th wealthiest community in the zip code in the state, does not reflect our community. And so we are appeal it by taking off all the nonprofits um, Add, you know, property and those incomes associated with that property so that we can lower our income. And that's really important for our school distribution aid. So uh, Carolyn, do, I mean, I think conversations are great, but does it make sense to actually have a written document to give to them 
We do. We do. Chris, Chris Nolan oh. prepares all. Perfect. I mean, he's he's got it set up so that we can just quickly do it. But you got to connect. You got to ask them if they would um, advocate for us because they have to walk over to DESE, you know, the Department of Education to do that because otherwise you go back and forth between DESE and DOR pointing. So it's actually a physical thing. You have to meet with Lisa or whatever, whoever is now in charge, DOR under Sean Cronin and, mm -hmm. and get that. And then the other thing is we have to sign up for, you know, we, we build in on our insurance now that we take all the classes at MMA, you know, the workshop classes that give us credit for our insurance. So those are the two things that are top priority for money. Um, and then the other thing is just, you know, it's really important to know what trends are happening. You know, if, if there are going to be budget cuts, what does it look like for budget cuts? Who's going to get, what are, what's going to get cut? You know, that kind of thing. And we also um, have a Western Mass MMA group that um, tries to set a list of priorities that we can all agree on in Western Mass. And we typically have a meeting there in one of the off sessions. Um, okay. And we also plan a conference for the spring to bring out, we're talking about Ann Gobi, of course, Natalie and Joe. Um, and then was there another person that we potentially wanted to have come Yes, but Melissa Hoffer. No, no. This this is to do with um, rural rural issues, but with, there's two bills that are really important that we need to generate and connect with other select boards about is um, the rural schools bill. Natalie and Joe are sponsoring. It's going to get us additional aid and relief because it's a lot more money, and then um, also um, the the disaster relief bill that um joe and natalie are trying to get funded for the you know from the millionaires tax uh original 250 million but there's so many gap storms like we're a what we experienced was a gap storm we didn't qualify for fema but on the other hand you know we had devastating damage and so you know to wait and waiting and finding out what we're going to get and not get from the state and this will guarantee at least some funding when we have losses like this. So it's really important that we get support for those two bills. We should reach out to the new mayor in Greenfield, say we have yeah. a lot of common commonality. We have, you know, the animal control officer, our um, public health nurse, our public health collaboration that we work on and all kinds of stuff that we do, regional sheltering mm -hmm. agreements. You know, there's a lot of things that we have going with the new mayor that this will be face to face is really important. Um, is, is she going to be there at the I MMA? Know, I'm going to call her tomorrow and okay. ask her. The deadline is pretty soon. I think it's yeah. Tuesday. Or something. What's her What's her name again? Um, Jenny Desorger. Yeah. Oh, Virginia. D -E -S -O -R -G -H -E -R. Okay. S O R G H E R. She's got a lot uh -huh. of energy. She's got a lot of energy. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a little bit different for us and a positive for us. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting. At, at one point, oh, cup, I don't know, maybe two years ago, I met with um, the former mayor's chief, chief of staff because I met with her to talk about the library and what they dealt with with the Greenfield Library. You know, anyway, um, and we were talking, I told her about CCI and she thought that was really interesting. So I'm wondering whether that is a good conversation to have with the mayor. Cause I mean, there's a lot of unrest up in Greenfield. I, I don't think they have the same channels of communication. I don't know, it's sort of a side, sidebar, but. I, I just think it's positive to talk to her and reach out yeah. to her and try to do some more collaborative stuff with her because if, would be great. It's clearly this administration is really um, doing social justice kind of stuff. So if we work collaboratively with us, it gives us a better community chance of getting stuff. Um, I had a question for you, um, Denise. Um, yep. I believe that we've gotten a package um, 
from DA about their dining hall to the building department. Have you heard anything about that? No, as a matter of fact, Pete was just asking me about that, whether that's going to come before the planning board because there's a stormwater component to that. So I haven't, oh yeah, Pete, yeah, you're muted. Oh, okay, I haven't heard anything yet. It's pretty I, thick. It's my uh, weekend yeah, reading, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, can't and, wait uh, to read that one. Engineering specs are uh, in uh, Amy's office as well. So. Good stuff. So they are going to comply with the stormwater? It is, I, as far as I've got so far, Carolyn, uh, I've got to the table of content and the project description talks about stormwater management system for work within the OFS and um, you know, following stormwater issues. So, but it was directed to the uh, Conservation Commission as a notice of intent. So I asked Monique, let's say, have you seen this? And she said, no. So I have just started to pull through it. Well, thank you. I'm really is excited. That for the, is that for the temporary building or the permanent building? Permanent. Permanent. What about the temporary building? Uh, we have not heard anything on that at all up to this point. They're working on it. <laughs> yeah, I was rolled by there the other day. Yeah. Wait, some. Yeah. There's a dredging going on up there. Um, I, I, I wanted to just add something that I don't just throw in your MMA hopper heads that we did hear from Stuart Saginaw that um, they're the f real pushes for housing and that they're actually going to be changing or talking about changing um, the community preservation committee allocations and making housing a priority. So I wouldn't be surprised if that also came up in your MMA. Mm hmm yeah, probably. I think so, yeah. Okay. Huh, interesting. Well, I guess time will tell whether we, you know, that I haven't seen any, heard anything about DA in the dining hall. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. But I know that another thing, I think um, our next planning board meeting, there's a conversation, hopefully the library is going to come before us, but for some reason, and I'm not sure what's going on because I, I talked to Amy about because I'm on the library building committee and um, the architect was saying, yeah, you know, I mean, in order to keep things moving that they have to come before the planning board. I said, well, I haven't heard anything about that yet. So I don't know what he's done. So I spoke with Amy at town hall and she was, you know, talking to um, Bob, the building commissioner, and they weren't really sure because it is, it's a renovation of an old, but it is new construction. I figured it would come to us, but then Bob was thinking, well, it's for educational purposes, but I'm I'm not sure whether the um, the Greenfield library, I mean, that was a whole new build construction, but I'm sure that that went to the planning board. So I guess, you know, she's supposed to get back to me on that so I can get back to the architect, but, you know, we're trying to, keep that keep that moving forward so we'll see yeah, i hope so because the rfp is supposed to go out and if you're going to hold them up again and it's going to be april or may or june or july I, I don't plan on holding anything up as a matter of fact we were going to do a site visit prior to them coming to the february meeting and um, as long as their ducks are in a row we'll see you know, but they've got to do what everybody else has to oh, go. Absolutely, through. absolutely. I'm I'm really just making an observation that this right. thing is not moving right. as fast as it should. Well, you know, part of that is I think the OPM may be overextended. I don't know. I don't know. That's on their end. All I know is that when it does come, I'll be able to actually run the meeting, but I will not be part of the discussion or the vote since I'm on the building library building committee, as is SAT too. So it'll be Andrea. <laughs> so it's going to be up to you and the other four planning, member, planning board members to have that discussion and to vote. So I will. I'll. I was going to send out a, a text to everyone to you know get prepared, be prepared for that. So and I wonder if um, there's a. This is since Christopher is sort of making up what he's doing. If there's any sort of role in there for him to help the library to move this forward so that they can keep themselves, you know, 
on pace. I don't know how how much you know that should be part of his purview. It's a talent well, project. Yeah, I mean, I, I sent Amy, I sent her information on the MBLC and um, I think other libraries. I mean, I, I did some research on that and, and other towns with building, I mean, had to go through the planning board. So I'm assuming that will happen, but I will I'll put that on my list tomorrow to speak with her again. And about. Good, and I just make a request. If, if this project needs to move ahead, that in addition to your regularly scheduled meeting, we, we can have a special one. To do meetings in between so that we could yes. do two meetings a month in order to move this project along. And we should try to coordinate with Conservation Commission. Although mm -hmm. I suspect that this is far enough back from the Bloody Brook that it may not be an issue. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that is. I think it's like what, a hundred foot buffer or something, Pete? Oh, you have a hundred foot buffer from the uh, bordering. Uh, yeah. Well, but a 200 foot buffer from riverfront yeah. from you, you, you do have the uh, wetlands delineation for the entire campus that senior housing provided so that's been done yes okay and yeah. that's been uh, okayed and reviewed and I, I have to check on the orad the anrad was submitted we reviewed it um we're good to go there um but there are borders on both the um bordering uh, wetland vegetation and the 200 foot border on the riverfront that you have to take into consideration so okay all right well i will check on that and you know we have, trust me we'll try and move that forward as quickly as possible as much as we can all right so let's see Ooh. um public comment well we've got a public no public Damn. Yeah, damn. <laughs> I know, no, no um, comment. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to congratulate the select board and anybody else who was involved in, in the informational meeting, um, because it was wonderful um, and very, very helpful. Um, and one other question: I had heard somehow that the town of Sunderland had decided they were not interested uh, in purchasing the building on. Uh, in in Sunderland that they've been thinking about, but is it does anyone know is that true? Have they just decided they're backing off from that? That was just in the paper that um, the town administrator said that the, you know it didn't seem like um, because it was more than the appraised value number one, and then also um, they'd have to put renovations in of a, at least a couple hundred thousand. So right. was appeared to be beyond your financial ability. I know they approached us in Deerfield <laughs> to chip in and I said, I'm, I'm wicked sorry, we can't pay our bills yet. So there's no money coming out of us this year. But the money, the money that we're going to spend would be on the 1821 building that is supposed to be for senior yeah. services. I didn't get into that. I didn't get yeah. into that. I just said, financially, we do not have a dime to contribute this year. Well, even frankly, if we wanted to. I think it was a pipe dream, but I'll, I'll stop right there. Okay, so is there any other business that was not anticipated that anyone has a burning desire to talk about? <laughs> I had a question. Um, did Christopher just come to listen or did he come to actually speak to us? I don't know, Christopher, what? <laughs> uh, if you want, I can give you a quick update on a couple things I've been working on. Um, so, so one uh, really quick uh, complete streets. Um, so as people may remember, you know, we had a complete streets prioritization plan put together back in 2020. Um, the first two priorities on that list had to do with the town common. Um, that project is kind of stalled given MassDOT's ownership of the roads. Um, I, I have reached out to MassDOT and we're kind of, you know, talking about that whole situation. Um, I am looking at um, the next priority down on the list, which is basically uh, sidewalks and parking along Elm Street. Um, so I, I'm gonna reach out to uh, Berkshire Design Group and see if they have capacity um, to look into that. Um, that's the Complete Streets Funding Program. There's a round in the spring and then a round in the fall. Um, I'm not sure we, be able to make the spring timeline at this point, but um, certainly the fall, and that's 
you know, up to $500,000 for construction. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, I'm, I'm pleased to say that a lot of aspects of that prioritization plan line up with our ADA transition plan. Um, and so that means there's another pool of funding available for ADA improvements. So your, your ramps on your sidewalks, et cetera. So there's um, some good opportunities there, but Tim, I see you have a question. Just a quick question. Yeah, um, our complete streets application was for a large area. It, would we be able to like just have Elm Street and look at sidewalks in front of businesses with ADA compliance since that's our street versus like Sugarloaf, which is the state's. Um, yeah, I can, uh, real quick, I can kind of share this prioritization plan just so you can see what it looks like. Um, and it was, I think it was created back in 2020. Um, and so the, the pricing <laughs> sadly no longer applies, um, but it is useful in terms of just laying out, okay, here are the things that the town decided at this time um, were our priorities, if I can find the, oh, there it is, give me one moment. Yeah, and it'll just look like a, a spreadsheet, but I'll just show you, you see that okay? Yep. Yeah. So I'll zoom in here. Um, so yeah, so you've got individual projects over here, Town Common, Park Street, um, and then as I was talking about Elm Street, um, and I think tie and bond, I'm not sure what level of detail they got into, but they, they provided this prioritization plan for the town. Um, and so you can kind of see, you know, what elements they recommended we include. Um, so the next step, you know, I mean, with, <laughs> with town, the town common and park street, you know, we have a design from Berkshire design group and it's just, unfortunately, we can't move forward with it yet because of the whole situation with jurisdiction. Um, Elm Street, on the other hand, we don't have a design for this, um, but we have, you know, a list of, you know, wants and needs um, that you would hope that a design team could translate into something that we can move into construction at some point. So, so that's uh, that's one main thing I've been working on, um, and then related. Um, and also related to the town campus. Um, I'm not sure if it's been discussed in Deerfield before, but um, you know, some communities have a commission on disability um, and that's uh, you know, an organization that, that do a, they do a lot of work around disabilities in communities. Um, one way that they're certainly helpful and would be helpful in Deerfield is if you have projects like the Complete Streets or like the town campus, that's the group that you can kind of bounce um, your improvements off of um, when it comes to accessibility. Um, additionally, having that group really, um, you know, it, it can improve your, your applications uh, and your scoring of your applications if you're going out for an ADA Municipal Improvement Grant. Um, so it's something I've just been looking at. Casey and I are still talking about it. Um, but you know, it's potentially, it could make a lot of sense also for Deerfield, just given our demographics. So, so that's just another thing I've been working on. And then uh, the, um, the shared streets, uh, Denise, I guess you already brought that up, didn't you? So, so yeah, we'll be talking to FERCOG about that and some kind of, some kind of solution there, but, uh, yeah, we'll get that money spent. So any, any other questions? I don't have any other questions, but I've, well, maybe th th this is sort of an offline, but um, Yankee Candle Corporate is moving out. Okay. I mean, we knew that's happening. Now the distribution center is going to be relocated to Hatfield. So the big question is, I think that th is corporate, is that in our town overlay, uh, tourism overlay district? I can't remember. I don't think it, so. Okay. All right. So, you know, I, it's just an opportunity to start thinking. And I think I had that conversation with Casey today, Christopher, I think we're going to have, have a conversation about that, about um, just figuring out, first of all, who actually owns that? Is it still, is it Yankee Candle or a subsidiary of Yankee Candle? And what are their plans and what's going to happen? Because it's an opportunity for some other business to come in, possibly a boutique hotel considering, you know, what, what's happening with Treehouse and, you know, 
now being able to have 5,000 people and, and where do they stay? So it's, it's just something, just something to think about in your spare time, Christopher. Okay. Yeah, and Casey had reached out about that uh, late yeah. this afternoon, so I've started doing a little bit of thinking around that. So oh, good. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we talked about. All right, uh, Lily. So I just um, Denise mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, but I was thinking that um, it would be very helpful if everybody would email everybody on all of their committees and remind them to vote. Yes, even if you're not the chair but you're here. And so I'm bugging you. And um, Denise mentioned it at the beginning of the meeting, but I figure at the end is never a bad yes. time. And that is the 16th from 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. Yes. <laughs> there also is a snowstorm predicted for that day. So good please, grief. Encourage, please encourage people to go early. I voted by mail. Or vote by, can, can we vote by mail, Tim? You have it's to apply too. every year to be able to vote by mail. So I applied on January 2nd. Yeah. My ballots arrived January 3rd. So yes, you can, but you have to apply every year. You had to do it by January 5th, I think. So that ship has sailed, but yeah, you can exactly. get an absentee ballot. I know. Allie, right, but I mean, it, it could be that, you know, the thing passes yeah. by two votes because the only ones that arrived are my ballots, my wife's ballot. <laughs> think how that would go over. <laughs> if you think you can't make it go to well no it's what's tomorrow tomorrow's friday yeah town yeah, hall's closed, closed. closed go to town hall day. so go to town hall on monday and, and fill out your absentee ballot martin luther king day oh geez okay well well you're out of luck planning then. on our part then we you know no what choice, then, then i just say suck it up and drive and vote on tuesday <laughs> Because I drove to the, the info session the other night in a lousy snow and 20 miles an hour on the way home. But yeah, somehow. no, it was it was gross last night. <laughs> it was not. It was, when was that? Was that last? Oh, God. I, I know, know. Tuesday night. I'm getting yeah, night. I know. I get my dates mixed up. To, uh, to anything. Okay. Um, if there's anything else, do I hear a motion? So, uh, 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 we need to set our next meeting. Ah, oh, geez, you're right. Good grief. Thank you, Lily. Okay. All right. So. Maybe we could it. just do it focused on um, MMA reporting out, unless people have crying needs. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we can do, we try and do short reports, but I mean, it's all really good information. So, um yeah, we will definitely. I'll put MMA on the on that, and you know we can. I can always revise the agenda. So that is the twentieth. Um, I don't know. Um, we might have a lot more information on budgeting and stuff like that. So I'm th I'm thinking maybe the fifteenth of February, something like that, or the twenty second. Um, wait. I mean, you don't want to. You got to have a little bit of a time lags to get information and make it worthwhile and having new new updates. But we might have a more grasp on the state budget by the 15th and the implications of what are on our budget. And does it make sense then to shoot for the 22nd since yeah. that's a little um, leeway? Or, okay. That's so Thursday. that's Thursday. February 22nd at 6.30, and I will send that out. Thank you, Denise. You are welcome. At 6.30, and usually what happens is Lily sends me the minutes, and I send out the agenda tomorrow or Monday. I mean, we usually do it pretty quickly. So if you're thinking that there's some other burning Thing to put on the agenda let me know before then if not i can make a revision or add it as you know i'll just have um, one comment before we go um i am so glad that pete law retired so he could work full-time for the town of deerfield <laughs> he, he, he didn't get a lot of credit on our phone night but i have to say um it takes four and a half hours to completely drive this is just not touristing get out and look 
This is drive the damages that occurred. And Pete Law was at every single site and every single place and multiple times. And I, I just, there wasn't enough acknowledgement and appreciation of how much he did and what a team player he was for all of us. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he really well, helped. He really helped us um, accomplish an awful lot in a very short period of time. Right. Well, well really we're, we're happy you were on CCI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I and I've never, and uh, I've never been busier since I retired. It's been unbelievable. Well, tell me about it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> We rope in everybody, but honestly, we're getting stuff done, guys. Really, and you know what? Thank you. It's a worthwhile endeavor in retirement, right, Andrea? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even as Leland. Leland. Okay. Also keeping cool. it young, right? Okay. Now, hey, you know, now do I, another do I good thing music? that Christopher Dunn brings down the average age of the you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, not that much because tomorrow is actually my birthday. So I'm oh, well. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my God. Because you're about half the age of most of us. <laughs> okay. Exactly. You, one more time. Happy. Do I have promotion? Um, I move I'm oh, to close wait. the select board the meeting. Select board first. I move yes. to close the select board meeting. I make a motion to adjourn. You Perfect. Second? I'll second. All in favor, too much, yeah. Carolyn, okay. that's I. So we're all set. CCI, anyone? I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay. Um, I will only... Oh, sorry. Andrea? Yes, yes. MA? Yes. Jim? Hi. Keith? Hi. Denise, yes. We are Carolyn. Okay, Carolyn and yeah, you already did. Okay, Hi. we are adjourned. And thanks, Pam, and thank you, Christopher, for joining us.